Hello, and welcome to our fourth episode of Thriving Together. I have with me two friends who I met, even though they're not that, they don't live that far away from me, I met them when we became active in protesting about the climate. So for, I guess let me just quickly introduce Judith Black, internationally known for her storytelling skills and internationally recognized. And on my right is Rob Bonney, author of Hyde, and he'll, he's going to tell you a little bit about that. So I want to begin by asking, why do we do this? Why do we do climate protests? Mm -hmm. So Judith, tell us why you do climate protests. So I started reading a lot of climate science. This changes everything, the end of nature, um, all of E.O. Wilson, the sixth extinction, and it left me on the couch saying to my husband, honey, get me a catheter. I'm here for the duration, which turns out to be not as long as any of us had hoped. And, you know, once, once you're there and you realize I could stay here in despair, but despair is no place to be. So the next place was action. And I've just had to basically change my entire life so that I was no longer a storyteller working in schools and institutions and was using my art to forward knowledge about what we've done to our climate and how what has to change. And also if you have children and grandchildren and you see how grim the future looks, you just feel you have to do as much as you can. Yeah. Thank you. And Rob, what about you? Why do you do climate protesting? Well, Judith and I did not rehearse uh, in advance, but my answer is very similar. Um, I was always, you know, respected. I always respected, you know, keeping our natural world beautiful and clean. But it was when I read Bill McKibben's uh, Global Warming's Terrifying New Math in Rolling Stone that I actually... Yeah ended up also on the couch like Judith and thinking, how is this possible? You know, how did it get so bad and we didn't know about it? And it dawned on me that looks like it's up to us. You know, uh, it's mind boggling that our leaders have not led the charge on addressing a very serious problem. So, um, I wasn't happy on the couch, and so I actually found somewhere some wisdom that was action is the antidote to despair yeah. and anxiety. It's, it can be scary, but it's better than doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I actually called up an organization that wanted people to participate, you know, not just send them money. Right. And... Uh, he said, you know what, you should probably start the first Ohio Citizens Climate Lobby chapter. And I said, all right, I guess I will. So you were in Ohio? <laughs> I was in Ohio at the time, yeah. And, uh, you know, it did, it did work. I mean, it, at times it's emotionally difficult, but it's very rewarding. You know, I get to know Carol and Judith and many other people. And this show is about thriving together. Mm. And this type of work, action has brought us together. We feel like a community. We love each other. And you know what? When If I'm able to, on my deathbed, reflect on my life, I feel like I can mm. have peace and feel like I did my best. You know, I love my nieces and nephews, my brothers, my mom, and so I do this for them, too, and, yeah. and the critters. And the critters. Thank you. Yeah. Thank okay. you. I want to add something that came up, right. which was um, I refuse to use the dryer because dryers call for a lot of energy, and we got the sun and wind. And my husband would always complain to me. He'd go, honey, the, the towels, they're so rough. I don't like them. Can we use the dryer? I go, no, we can't use the dryer. We got the sun and the wind. He goes, do you really think what you do is going to make any difference? Mm. And I thought about that. It was, it was like, Pow! and I said, I don't know. But you have to live with yourself. Right. Yeah. So you do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So 
when I started, the first group that I protested with, well, not the first group ever, <laughs> because I've protested with so many groups through the years, but for climate protest, I protested with no coal, no gas. A lot of them were in New Hampshire. We were protesting in New Hampshire. And something that reflecting on it is very interesting to me is when we first met, a lot of us who didn't know each other, we, we identified three goals. The third goal was to shut down the coal-powered plant in New Hampshire. So this was in 2019. It was five years ago. That coal that coal powered plant has just announced yes. they're closing. So we we we've, we've got success with that. Yeah. But our first goal, which I don't think I fully comprehended at the time, the first goal was to create community, mm -hmm. and that was so important because. That is what's kept me in this through the years. That, so thriving together, whatever your goals, we thrive when we're working together. Can I add something local? Yeah. Yes. Um, so when I talked about the article, you know, that was a global story about the rising average temperature on Earth. Um, but here in Beverly, uh, just this winter, a lot of people may know, Lynch Park got seriously flooded. And there's actually a video um, that was done by a, someone that we all work with, Steve Andrada, about the flooding. And you can actually watch it, uh, go to YouTube, and it's the northeast of Boston uh, environmental news. But the takeaways from this video were that the flooding is so frequent and so severe that they lost all the roses in the rose garden, gone, mm. dug up. And the 100-year-old trees are in danger from having their roots soaked in, in salt. And, the, you know, they're thinking about building a seawall so high that you can't sit on the lawn and see the sea. So, you know, that's a very uh, now thing. And that's actually not my worst fear. I mean, it's sad, but I'm worried about um, food supply, water supply, um, and uh, you know, instability from people that whose home are losing their homes. You know, I'm worried about what my nieces and nephews are going to have to deal with. And so, the time is now. You know, that's why I'm doing this. Um, there are a lot of issues that people are facing, but we have a short window of opportunity. And the other thing I want to say is that there are things we can do, and we can thrive together in a sustainable way. It's actually better for community. People are lonely. People are, you know, scared. And uh, so it's not just the sky is falling. It's also we have things to do, and we need to do them now because... The longer we wait, the more of these chemicals are in the atmosphere that start, you know, amplifying their warming effect. So, you know, late, waiting five years is a huge problem. Um, so we need to do it now. Right. So thank you, Rob. That's an excellent segue into my next question, which is what do we do? What have we been doing? Judith, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing. Well, I thought it would be fun to start that with a, a story. Um, because when you mentioned building seawalls, so what happens when you build a seawall, guess what? All that water goes into the neighboring community. It changes the biodiversity of, of the water because it heats up certain waters. It, it requires what we call um, a huge carbon input because building those walls is expensive, requires a lot of energy and, and all this stuff. They're natural solutions, and everything is connected. The head man, when he was a boy, loved frogs. Oh! He climbed the tree with the tree frogs. He liked to get in the water and look at the little sedge frogs. At night, he'd hide behind a boulder and watch the Goliath frog come out of the water. Drawn by the heat of the boulder, it would grab its dinner. 
that was as a boy. As a man, my people, come, come. These frogs, they are making me crazy. I cannot sleep. Oh, blah, 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 blah. if I cannot sleep, I cannot think. If I cannot think, I cannot make good decisions. So I ask you, my people, please capture the frogs. I don't care what you do with them. Boil them, fry them, send them to your relatives in this city. Fricassee, whatever, but please finish the frogs. Well, a very old woman walked up to him and said, my son, do you not understand that the great creator has made everything for a purpose? Yes, baby. And this, the, these frogs were created to make me crazy. <laughs> and so the people, because they loved their head man, they did as he asked. They ate frogs for three days and three nights nonstop. And then on the fourth night, oh. And on the fifth night, Mm. And on the sixth night, oh, 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 my people, come, my people, look, I have these welts from mosquitoes I am scratching all night. And this time the people are much more empathetic because everyone is. We must capture all of these mosquitoes. We must get rid of them. But as you know, as you know, as you know, a mosquito only needs a half a teaspoon of water to replicate. And so, after a few weeks, the head man says, we will have to move. We will have to take everyone and find another place. And his people gathered up all they had, and they walked past the trees they had grown up with, the huts they lived in, the graves of their elders, the old woman sidled up to the head man. My son, do you understand now? Oh, yes, baby. Everything is connected. Mm. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Judith. So, Rob, right. what have you been doing? <laughs> yeah, geez. Well, I retired um, about 10 years ago because I realized that my usefulness on Earth was most needed in on the climate stuff. Mm. So um, we're all doing it. We're not getting paid for <laughs> any of it. Um, <laughs> but you know what? It's my one life, and this is yeah. what I feel that I should be doing. Um, and so I do a lot of what might sound not fun, which is working with elected officials. Citizens Climate Lobby, Citizens Climate Lobby North Shore, CCL North Shore. Uh, just if you put that together without any spaces, you'll find information about it. Um, we work with government. We work on policy. And it's actually quite rewarding, very educational and affirming. Um, and probably the most important thing we need to do. You know, these days when government is demonized, um, we need government. And believe it or not, government is the most efficient way to deal with climate because they have the power to make the major changes quickly that we need to make. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about um, things we can do personally, you know, which we all do because it... It is healthy and you have to sane. live with yourself, <laughs> and uh, and maybe it does have a collective impact. But really, what we need to do is be involved in groups that are pushing for big change. And CCL works on something called a carbon price, carbon pollution price, and it's basically you know incentivizing people that are powering their operations with clean energy. So. Um, I could go into that. We don't have time to go into that, but uh, it's uh, super important. There's a lot of other stuff that 350 Mass is doing, and uh, that's related to government. So I do want to tell one story also, which is that um, a few decades ago, there was a huge problem with the ozone. Ah. And uh, it was such a severe problem that there was an international gathering, and... 
they said we have to ban these chemicals that are going up into the air and you know we're at serious risk of actually literally all dying um, because this protects us from radiation and so it, they made an agreement and Ronald Reagan president signed the agreement and the countries abided by the agreement and in recent years the ozone hole has healed completely and that's the kind of thing we need. We they, then this is an emergency, and it needs big scale action. So that's why groups of people together. Mm. Um, and I have we're going to talk later about how the viewers can do things. So I won't talk about that. Um, but the other thing that I did, and I don't have time for this, but I wrote a book, <laughs> and uh, it's called Hide and. Uh, by me, Robert John Bonney. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think a lot of us that have been doing this climate work have, have said, ah, oh, it's not happening fast enough. It's, you know, we keep getting foiled. Um, what can we do? And we all have said to each other, we need to think creatively. We need to communicate. We need to reach people. We have to, uh, with storytelling, it has to be emotional. Right, it has to connect with people about things they can relate to. So I put all that together to a book. It's about a 14-year-old who disappears, and his parents are distraught. He's communicating with them, and they can't find him. And he is basically telling them they need to be activists. He's like, "I'm not coming home until you, you know, take mm -hmm. action." So uh, it was a great experience, um, and uh, it was good for me and for my mental health to work on a project and to do my best. And uh, so, yeah, that's I am working on a new book. Uh, it's not about climate, but uh, I, it is what I add to my mix of things I do to, for my well-being. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to tell you how when I first got involved with this, protesting the Bow coal-powered plant in Bow, New Hampshire, I protested there. I was arrested. I'd never been arrested in my life before, but I was arrested there. I handcuffed, put in jail, was bailed out. And, and, and you know what? I really was proud to be arrested, working for something that matters so much to me. More recently, the, the three of us, with many others, have protested in parades, in wearing fabulous costumes. <laughs> We've protested in New York at... Uh, what, what? It was called the March to Stop Fossil Fuels. And they were organizing people from all over the country, and the goal was to march all the way to the United Nations before they opened for their climate talks. Yeah, it, it was fabulous. It was fabulous being there. Um, so, over these five years, and maybe a little bit more, we've, we've protested in many ways. We've protested at some of the major banks because, not because we have anything against banking, we need banking, but these particular banks provide so much money to the fossil fuel industry and we needed to stop it. So. We had a wonderful time with giant replicas of credit cards <laughs> issued by these banks, Chase Bank and Bank of America. And Bank of America. And so we had this little skit that we sawed down through the middle of this giant credit card in front of the banks in Boston. Fabulous way to spend an afternoon, a sunny afternoon. Um, a, a lot of fun doing this, and tremendous feeling of community, working with people who feel the same way about these mm -hmm. issues that, that we do. Yeah. So, and so, oh. go ahead. Do you want to add? One well, more I was thing just going to gonna say, and a lot of these come through this organization, which is fabulous because we do everything. So we do. Also, what Rob's organization does, you know, the, the political lobbying, but also we work with, so Stop the Money Pipeline is an organization that says, okay, guys, 
What are the pillars that hold up the fossil fuel industry? If fossil fuels are warming our environment dangerously, the government isn't cutting them off, and the companies aren't, why do we still have them? And we realize the banks, Chase, among others, has supplied over $900 billion since the Paris climate talks. So if the banks stopped funding it, if investment companies like BlackRock stopped saying, ooh, invest your money here, and if, play, if insurance companies like Liberty Mutual weren't insuring the safety of their pipelines, there wouldn't be an industry. So some smart organizations like Stop the Money Pipeline we work with, and they say, let's look at the source of that. Because you, you can get arrested at the gates of, of Chase, but you also could get people to simply divest and put their money where their values are in local banks. We also, so we do protests, we do nonviolent protests, we do civil disobedience, we do the lobbying, we do education, we do everything. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And so, if you're wondering how can you join us, how, how do you even begin to get involved, there's a lot of different ways. I, I want to first mention a local group, Change is Simple. Mm. Change is Simple. They're, they show up at Lynch Park on that day during the summer when there's a lot of organizations there. Uh, and what, what else? What else can people do? How can, can people join us? Sure. So uh, there's uh, too many to list, and it can be overwhelming, and I don't want your viewers to think, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so I picked two. Okay. And one Tell is us. actually not really with these three organizations that we've been focusing on. And this, in my opinion, may be the most important thing people can do uh, this year, which is elections and voting. So you can do some things from your home if you're not really mobile. Um, you can do phone banking, you can uh, send messages, you can do postcards, um, you can donate. And I would encourage people to look at the platform that these candidates have and make sure that uh, assertively, quickly working on climate with a focus on community and health is at the mm -hmm. very top. And this is going, we have a presidential election. <laughs> Look at the candidates. We have a short window of opportunity. We can't lose four years on this. So I strongly urge people to get involved. I mean, all of us here have also done door knocking, which is not my favorite thing to do, but I do it. Um, and, but there's also, you know, joining a campaign, looking up a candidate, say, hey, I want to help you. Um, the other thing is to join a group um, because for all the reasons we've been talking about today, um, but also because it is sort of the only way that I know what's going on. Now, we're all self-taught mm -hmm. and uh, we teach each other. We um, share, you know, what we're going through, uh, figure out what to do. And as you said, we have a lot of fun. I mean, sometimes it's not fun and it's sad, but we bond over that too. Um, and we focus on solutions, right? We talk about what we want to do, what we see the world that we want to build is and build it together. And, and what's the name of the group? Isn't there a group specifically for... I'm going to say retired yeah. people or yes, seniors? Yes, there's two of them. Yes. There's seniors, senior climate... Uh, elders senior, Climate Elders Action. Climate Action, and there's both a national and a Massachusetts group, and the... Um, the H... Their website will come up, and the other one is Third Act, started Third by Act. Bill McGibbon, right. who is the person who wrote The End of Nature, the book you wrote, the, the article you read, The Man Who Has Inspired So Many of Us. And it's basically for those of us between retirement and death to say that you can still be active. And they were pivotal on the Chase Bank um, protest that you were talking about, and they've been incredibly good partners. And you also have Green Beverly if you want to work on things locally. Because, yes, behavior change is one piece of it because you have to live with yourself. And, there, mm -hmm. and the one thing people never mention, and the most important behavior change is called conservation. Because you could change over your energy systems, which is great. 
get rid of your fossil fuel furnace, put in air source heat pumps, put you know, solar on your roof, do, you know, trade in your clunker and use mass transit, you know, or an electric bike or an electric car if you have to have one. But, and these are all important, but the most important thing you can do is use less, which is Americans we don't think about very often. Right. And that can be as simple as turn your clothes washer on before you go to sleep instead of at four in the afternoon. Think about your energy use. Cut back on it. We, you, everything you want, you don't need. And I want to add, you know, because we're talking about groups and these groups here that we've mentioned, is that um, we need most people to be doing these things, or at least a, a, a certain percentage of people to be doing these things. So our groups do educating of the community, and we say, hey, yeah, try this, do that. So that's another reason to join groups. So it isn't just you doing it by yourself. It's multiplying your effectiveness. Yeah. And I want to mention also something which I believe is been an intentional campaign by the powers that be, uh, corporations, to get us to keep buying more stuff than we need, which is to say, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, th think about yourself and what you're doing. And they don't really want us to get organized and pressure corporations to do their business differently. And that's what we need to do. That's another reason why we need these organizations, because uh, it's, a, it's a big task. So I, I don't know if we have time to hold these up one more time. Maybe we could... I have one more initiative. So corporate responsibility, make polluters pay, is a bill that's coming to our legislature. Let them pay for the damage they've done. And the other big thing is using the land we have, not as dirt, but as earth. Regenerative agriculture, getting churches and synagogues to dig it up and put in land, naturalize it or put in good, healthy food. But change the way we, we relate to the earth. Thank you for tuning in to the fourth episode of Thriving Together. We've enjoyed telling you about why we do climate protest, what we do, and what you can do to join us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. You're welcome.